Yeah, I'm glad the first question was an easy one. <laughs> Yay! So for the purpose of the video, which I'm recording over there, Mary has asked, what is the, um, how does she receive the Eucharist in the Divine Will and what is the purpose, what is the benefit, etc. Um, yeah, thanks. <laughs> um, <laughs> I really need to keep my theological books with me when I'm doing these classes, don't I? Um, well, the first thing is to recognize that when you're, when you're doing anything in the Divine Will, anything your act is it's got three qualities to it okay see if i can remember the three qualities there is trans temporality which i know you're all very familiar with <laughs> there is universality and multiplicity yeah three very common words that you get in the times every single day so what you do is when you um when you do an act so when you receive the eucharist in the divine will because you've done your prevenient act jesus jesus you want to receive the eucharist so i'm going to receive it with you it means that the grace of receiving the eucharist impacts the lives of every soul from adam to the last man just like every other act you're doing so trans temporality means it's not in the temple zone it's in the eternal zone not in the sorry, not in the temple mode of operation. So in the temple mode of operation, we receive the Eucharist, and 15 minutes later, that communion has come to an end. That's about 15 minutes. Okay. Um, but because you've done the act of receiving the Eucharist in the divine will, then the the grace of that act is transtemporal. It's eternal. The grace of the act. Yeah. Um, the you will receive the Eucharist. In a state of grace no one should receive it if they're not in a state of grace which means that it is a sanctifying act which means that, that and that's the grace of universality which means that you are sanctifying all creatures of all time it has a sanctifying effect on everybody okay then there is the multiplicity which means that the act is multiplied to infinity so the act of receiving the Eucharist, like every other act, it's not just tied to the Eucharist. Every act you do is multiplied to infinity. Okay, so it's not just a soul act. It becomes an eternal infinite act that impacts the soul, the, every soul. All right. Now, I'm telling you what the act is doing to actually grasp the mystery of the act. It's outside of sense experience, which is what Father Joseph covers. He says these things we can know by study, but they're outside of human experience. Unless Jesus, um, unless Jesus does so. Now, Joe has asked the question, can you take communion on behalf of all and make reparation for all acts of sacrilege? Absolutely. Because when you receive communion, let's just say I'm receiving communion in the human mode. I go to receive communion. And let's just say that people aren't going to Mass. And I say, Jesus, I want to receive communion, um, making reparation for all those who will not receive communion and thus will not ever experience the state of union with God that's given. So you're making the whole one of the big purposes of the divine will is making reparation on behalf of all of humanity for all time, because every human being was created to give glory to God from the first moment of their conception to the last breath. And let's just say us, right? But let's just say we haven't done that. When you're doing it in the divine will, God is filling up the voids in the soul that have been caused by our failure to give him eternal glory. God himself is filling up those voids. Now we ourselves, through our divine acts, can fill up the void in the glory owed to God by our next door neighbour, or by the man down the road, or by Adolf Hitler, or Stalin. We can fill up the void by, and this is what reparation really is all about. It's not about us per se, it's primarily about God, making reparation to God for the glory owed to him. Okay. Any, any other questions regarding all this? 
I, I, you know, ask me something simple about the Trinity or something. <laughs> well, we can't have you being niggled when you receive communion, Mary. That's just not on, is it? <laughs> You're welcome. I don't even know if I answered the question, to be honest. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Absolutely. Thank you, Mary. Where, where are you? Oh, yeah, there you are. Right. Yeah. Mhm. Mm mhm. Mm yeah, yeah, I have I have actually got a book downstairs which is um to do with the Eucharist in the divine will, but I haven't read it for about a year. I have read it cover to cover, I just haven't read it for about a year. So yes, there there is a process of how to receive Jesus in the divine will. But at the moment it's just a case of okay, when we receive Jesus in the divine will, we do it from our standpoint at the moment. Oh, right, okay. Sure, thank you. Thank you. Okay, any more questions before I move on? Oh, great, okay. So, where am I going with this? Um, the eternal mode, transtemporality, uh where was i i was on page forgive me for this for a moment i just need to find the page that i was on there we go oh it's too late now anita too late i've moved on <laughs> yeah come on Okay, so Jesus, um, so the question for the purpose of the, the mobile is um, doing acts in the divine will and lots of things going on during the day. I'm doing this, I'm doing that, I'm doing the other, lots of things and confusion and so on. Um, so what we're looking at is when we start our day, we do our prevenient act, which causes the sun of the divine will to rise in the soul. That's the prevenient act in the morning. We fix our will in the divine will. Jesus, I give you my will, exchange for your will. And I place every act of today in your will. So you do it ahead of schedule. That, Jesus says, causes the sun to rise in the soul. And then he says that as the soul goes through the day, clouds can obscure the sun because the human will can pop into play. So we have to do our actual acts, which is what you've just done, from divine will driving my driving. We can do small prevenient acts during the day. For example, if we're about to switch on the computer, Jesus wants to switch on the computer, so I'm switching it on with Jesus. We can do actual acts, come divine will, come type in my typing. The thing is, what we need to learn to do, this is why contemplation is so important. If we cultivate an attitude of contemplation, it's going to have multitude of effects on us. One of which is to help us to cultivate a slower pace of life. Okay, Our world is living in the fast lane 
we are not called to live in that lane. We are called to cultivate a slower, more contemplative life, less complicated, simpler. This is what Jesus is calling us to do. This is the call of the divine will. As we learn to live that lifestyle, the contemplative lifestyle, the grace communicated to the soul will be a reminder to do our acts in the divine will. And you'll find that when you start saying things like, come divine will, come walk in my walking, you'll find that instead of walking at a very fast pace, you'll suddenly find yourself easing back. Um, you, you might find that instead of um, doing a lot of things rushed, you'll start to do things more timely and more peaceful, more calmly. You'll also find that there's a call to live more simply. You'll feel that um, your life is complicated, you're done with living this complicated life, you want a simpler life. So you'll start to clear things out of your life that are taking away from the nice, steady contemplation of living in the divine will. So these will be the things that will happen to you and you, you choose um, the lifestyle that you want to live. You choose it and you'll make the changes accordingly. Just one moment, Gerard. 